Okay. So next up, uh, we have Jean Schumacher. Jean earned her doctorate in science and education and has taught chemistry, biology, and environmental science for over 30 years. A follower of a plant-based diet since 2009, she has earned her plant-based nutrition certificate through Cornell University and completed her additional coursework by experts in this facet of nutrition. She is a firm believer in walking the walk and is committed to inspiring people to change their health through whole foods, plant-based lifestyle, as well as reducing exposure to toxins in their life. Jean currently runs Simply Plant-Based, a plant-based online education program. Today, she will guide you through a plant-based boot camp covering the basics of transitioning to a plant-based diet. It is so great to be here. Thank you so much. And I'm honored to be able to present to you because for me, my journey started with a trip to the emergency room. I had a 105 degree fever. My blood pressure was about 250 over 150. I should have had a stroke. I don't know why I didn't, but I, I survived it. And they never did find out what was wrong. I really don't care. I was sick. And the woman who was treating me was not only a medical doctor, but she was a nutritionist as well, which is pretty rare in this day and age. So how do I begin? Where do I start? Because doc, you told me I need to start this, and you've got 10 minutes with your doc, and that's it. How do I begin? It's kind of overwhelming when you think about how to transition and change because you're changing pretty much what you've learned for the last 50 years of your life in the SAD diet, you know, the standard American diet, SAD for short. So how do we begin? Well, it's the food. That's the bottom line. And if you go to the CDC website, you're going to see some of the highest diseases, heart disease, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's. I think that's, for me, one of my biggest fears is I'm going to get dementia or Alzheimer's. And I don't want that. I want my last days to be out kayaking on Cape Cod and biking on the trails. I, my grandfather was the radio operator for the Marconi station in Wellfleet. So my roots go back here, and I'm looking forward to. And here's a secret. Shh, shh. In Falmouth, we're going to be starting a plant-based educational retreat. So I'm really excited about that. The food. It's the food. So today I'm going to be doing three demonstrations here right now. I've got, this is a steamer. And this is amazing. You can get this at Kohl's or Bed Bath & Beyond. And right now I started steaming the rice. This is arborio rice. And typically when you make a risotto, you're using fat, butter, cream to cook the rice. Not today. So we're going to use steam and we're steaming the rice to cook this arborio rice. So I've got this going right now. This is the base is just filled with water, and it's creating a steam, and it's cooking the rice. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but I have a two-tiered, this is two tiers, and I'm going to stick the peas in in about 50 minutes, and I'm going to put the peas in here and heat the peas up. So this is just a bag of your, you know, frozen peas from Whole Foods. And so we'll come back to that one. This one's cooking and starting already. So over here, this is called an Instant Pot, and this is a game changer. This is totally, I suggest you not get one, get two, okay? I'm serious. <laughs> because for me, I batch cook on the weekends, and I have two of these going at all times. And so right now, and this, what's so awesome about this is you can open this up, and I've got this hot right now, but the liner comes out. And this is great. You can use it as a slow cooker. It's a st it, it cooks with steam. It cooks in a variety of different ways. So you can start with this by sauteing your onions if you wanted to and cook right here in the pot without oil. You don't need oil. You don't need oil to cook. So I'm making, this is called Simply Stew. And so what I've done for the Simply Stew is I've taken the garlic. First of all, I used roasted garlic, and what I do is to roast the garlic, you just pull back some of the peels, the, the fiber, as much as you can get off. Put this whole clove in your oven on a tray, and I use silicone mats. Put this on this, cook it, and your house is going to smell amazing. And it, put this on, and for half an hour, about 
350, 375, somewhere in there, for half an hour. And it's going to cook this, and it's going to make this so that it's not as pungent and, and bitter on your, on, your fit and your taste buds. So this is a roasted garlic right here. And then I'll, what I've done ahead of time, just for the sake of expediency, is I've put the, the garlic, the ginger, the turmeric, the six ounces of tomato paste, and some of the water and some of the veggie broth into this container already. Uh, and I added the measured dates. I use the dates. Um, that's my emplacement of sugar or any kind of sugar in a recipe. Uh, I'll use those dates right there. So I've mixed all of this up. So now I'm going to put in the other pieces that go into the stew. So I've got some, this is just a butternut squash. And I thought I had scissors up here, but we'll just rip that open. And, and I started this cooking already, sauteing, just so that it's going to cook a little bit faster. Um, because you want to bring it up to steam, the temperature. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add the spinach as well. And... Adding that. These are lentils. There's two different types in here. There's a green lentil and then the red lentils. And what's so magical about the red lentils is that they are going to dissolve. And they become almost like a thickened piece in here. And this is going to be amazing. So we're just going to add these lentils straight into the pot. OK? And I think that's everything. We've got some veggie broth that we're going to add to this. And I use some of the veggie broth in here in a blender. And I mix all this stuff up ahead of time in the blender. So when you're cooking this, you just put all this stuff in the blender. And it's amazing. I use my little Vitamix. So good stuff. So, And I recommend, this is called Field Day Organic. This is the low-sodium vegetable broth. This is amazing in terms of flavor. You can get it most places like Whole Foods. And if they don't carry it, you can ask them for it. But you have to be careful with a lot of these because a lot of these contain oil. And a lot of them are very high in salt. So I use that a lot. This is the magic ingredient. This is called Bear Bear. And this is an incredible, incredible spice. If you've not tri tried this, this is a Mediterranean spice that is just absolutely incredible. So that's already been added to it, and the turmeric and the ginger. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my uh, base here and add it to this. And it's that simple, OK? So I've added this to that, and I'm going to put the lid back on. And I'm going to turn that on. It makes a little happy noise when it's ready to go. <laughs> and I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm just going to put it on manual. So manual. And it automatically goes by default to whatever you went to last time. And I cooked this stew a lot. Uh, and so it goes to 30 minutes. Now you walk away, and it does its own thing. So it's telling me it's I'm starting. <laughs> ready. I'm ready to go. And you want to make sure that the vent is closed because it's going to come up to pressure and it's going to start steaming. And there's a variety of ways you can do and make this. So the Instant Pot is great because you can use this for to make yogurt, cook beans, cook grains, all kinds of things. You can use it as a slow cooker, saute. So it's a, it's a game changer. OK. So now we've got our dinner going. We've got the spring pea risotto. We've got the uh, Simply Stew. Now for dessert. <laughs> this recipe came as born out of sheer desperation. Because, uh, you know, we have this. Uh, I'll be the first to admit hi, I'm Gene Schumacher. I'm a food addict. Okay, it's true. I've lost over 100 pounds. I've changed my health destiny. Okay, I, my blood pressure, I was on four different medications. My thyroid. My doctor basically looked at me in the eye and said, you're going to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life now. And actually, I'll be in. Uh, Dr. Neil Barnard's got a new book coming out called Hormones on Hormones Haywire, Hormones Gone Haywire. And it's basically what happened with me. As I started my plant-based journey, I started releasing a lot of the toxins, and it started to shut my, my thyroid down. So I was put on medication, but then I was reversed because I went plant-based, and my thyroid started to heal itself. So it's absolutely amazing. The human body is incredible in, ta in terms of how you can actually heal. So if you come to my house, my house is clean. I made it my wellness center. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And you know, but there's always that, I call it the inner raccoon. 
the inner raccoon comes out. And if you've ever seen a raccoon, a raccoon is going to get whatever it wants, whatever way, shape, or form. It's going to find, it's going to get into whatever, because it's got these little great hands, and they can manipulate and, and pick locks and get in windows and climb chimneys, and they're amazing. And they can find that food. And so my house is pretty clean, but I keep going back to those cupboards, hoping that there was a nut or something that I missed <laughs> along the way. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I'll find something. There's nothing. So this recipe was born out of sheer desperation in, in terms of, I got to have something. I got to cook. I want a cookie. I want a cookie. And I'm not getting in my car and going to the store. No, nope. So I took some bananas. So, you're, well, let me introduce you to... <laughs> the other game changer, air fryer. If you've not heard of one of these, amazing. I, I recommend the for the air fryer. This is, on the base part of this, uh, this is the Phillips. And on this, it's got these bottom ridges. I don't know if you can see the ridges or not, but I test drove several of these others, and these does not cook as well. I mean, the others don't cook as well as the, the Phillips. And this is a trademark or whatever, but it's got these ridges on the bottom, so it changes the airflow and how things cook. So this is absolutely amazing. So this is going to be, we're going to put, uh, make our, our, these are going to be banana oat balls. And if you have grandchildren or you're just a chocolate addict, take a tablespoon of those vegan chocolate chips, throw those in there. <laughs> That'll take it to Jedi level. <sighs> yeah. So I'm going to take my bananas, and I'm just mashing them with a fork, Okay. And you want the ripest bananas, you know, just when they're starting to look, you know, the yellow, ugly, you know, and you're like, mm, yuck. My husband's like, no, I don't want those, you know. And these are the perfect. This is the, this is the, the perfect banana that you're going to want. So you're just going to mash those up. And I love extracts because extracts add flavor without adding sugar or anything else. And especially one of the things you want to avoid um, in, is in is like coconut milk, things like that, uh, especially in a lot of Indian dishes. Very high in saturated fats. We want to avoid those saturated fats. So one of the things I do is I use almond milk, and then I have this great coconut extract to give the flavor, but not the fat. So, uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of the coconut extract. My husband absolutely adores coconut. So uh, coconut goes to in a lot of things in our house. And... Uh, Little, this is a little vanilla extract. So I'm just going to add a little bit of these extracts just to give it a little bit more of a liquid to it. And my favorite is maple extract, which just gives to me this, you know, nice, you smell it and you're like, oh, this is awesome. I love this. So I add a little bit of maple extract. And my best favorite, favorite, favorite is pumpkin pie spice. Not going to lie. Trader Joe's, I buy it by the case. Don't go behind me in Trader Joe's because I like wipe out shelves. Okay, so you don't want to get behind me. So I'm going to sprinkle some of this on here. And I'm going to mix that in. And so it's just creating like a little bit of a mush, basically. And then I'm going to add some oats to this. These are just plain, old-fashioned Quaker oats. So I'm adding it by handful at a time. Now, I don't measure, OK? I just kind of add. And things work out well. So and I'm just going to keep adding until the texture gets to the point where it is, I can roll it into a ball. And like I said, this recipe was born out of sheer desperation for a cookie or something sweet. So this just met my you know, uh, requirements without question. So, okay, so I've got that mushed around enough. Now I'm gonna roll it into little oat balls, okay? And I'm putting those into my air fryer. So, alrighty. And, alrighty. So, oh, and God said, let there be light. Alrighty. So, and I make these about the size of a golf ball, and they're, you know, you can make them a little bit smaller or you can make them bigger, depending upon what you want. But what is so delicious, and I tried this to do this because I was making this for a cooking demonstration, what I was doing for 
uh, a or a potluck. And I was going to make a bunch of these. So I p cooked them in the oven, and it doesn't work the same. The air fryer, I'm telling you, is an, a magical uh, piece of equipment. And it just really crisps up on the outside and makes it soft and chewy on the inside. And it doesn't happen that way in the oven. They, they really get dried out, and they were like dust balls. And I'm like, really? No, sorry. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> no, we'll try this again. OK, so now we've got our nice little balls. And I've got some water here just to rinse off. OK, so now I'm just going to put this on for 10 minutes. That's it. 10 minutes in here. And they have two now. Um, I can't see it. So they have two. Uh, this is the older model, and it's just got the dial on top. Now they're coming out with the digital version. And uh, you don't need to. So if you can still get this, this version, this is going to be a game changer in your house, especially because I love French fries. French fries, I live on French fries. So this is a way I can cook French fries without the oil. So without question. OK, so we've got these things cooking now. And I just want to talk a little bit about this right here. This is called Bima and Paws. This, I met this woman at the plant stock, which was at Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's farm. And they had that for about six years on their farm that's featured in the movie Forks Over Knives. And if you've not seen that movie, Forks Over Knives, that's your homework for tonight. Go home, find it, watch it. It's a game changer. So there's all kinds of other good movies, What the Health, you know, Eating You Alive, all good movies. But I met this woman, and she has these infused balsamic vinegars. This is my, my absolute favorite, pineapple. My second is racy mango. Oh, so good. But you drizzle a little bit of this. You steam some kale. OK, kale is superfood, but in terms of flavor, eh, it's kind of rough. <laughs> you know, especially to try to eat as much kale as we need to eat. OK, drizzle a little bit of this on. Game on. OK, this is amazing. So and they just came out. She just sent me a new one. This one's sesame ginger. And I use this when I'm stir frying. I'll just drizzle some of this on it. Oh, so good. Delicious. They came up with a new flavor. She came up with dill pickle. And I was like, really? So she sent me a, a little sample of it. And I tasted it and went, oh, dill pickle. This is going to be good. I can't wait to play with that one. So all right. So let's get back to our presentation while these guys are cooking. And you might be able to smell this bad boy as it's starting to waft out. And it makes the house just smell delicious. I mean, like down home cooking, like, wow, that is awesome. What are you cooking? You know, it just, it just perfumes the house. So, OK. So now we've been cooking with food. All right. So what is whole food plant-based living? I'm so glad you asked. You guys are great. <laughs> it's basically eating fruits, vegetables, you know, your starches. And your know, starches? I can have starch? Yes, you can. Starches are amazing. But it's usually the company that starches keep, like the potato and the sour cream and the butter. Yeah, no, we want to get rid of that stuff. And then you can use other things to top your potatoes with. And I love starch. But it's not the centerpiece, but I mean, the fruits and vegetables, big time, OK? But and legumes, things like that. So that's what we're looking for. And this is just, I wanted to put a couple pictures up there for you to see kind of what. And we're very visually attracted to this food. I mean, it, it just resonates with our eyes. Because so if you go back in terms of evolution, our eyes, we have this finite range of colors. And we're focused on those colors to help us survive in, the, in nature. So it's also easier to kind of talk about what plant-based is not. But when I win lotto, that's my car. Just saying. OK? That's a 19. My brother will argue with me, why do you want a 69? Why don't you go for a 57? That's a better car. That's my car. Kerosene, amazing fuel. But if you put kerosene in that car, I will cry. Because you're going to kill that engine. And that car won't run anymore. And that's kind of what we're doing, is we're putting the wrong fuel into our bodies. OK? So basically, that's anything with a mother or a face. OK? Meat, fish, dairy, eggs, highly refined foods. Because I know a lot of vegans that are fat and unhealthy. Why? Because they're eating a lot of processed foods. And there's a lot of 
processed stuff that's come out. They've got this new meat thing called Beyond Meat, if you guys have seen this. Oh, you start looking at the specs on these bad boys, okay? It's very processed, very high. And if you've ever read the book, there's a book out there called Fat, Sugar, Salt by Michael Moss, who's a Pulitzer Prize journalist researcher. And he did a research on the, the food industry. And basically, kind of what the cigarette industry did to us when they started adding a bunch of nicotine to the cigarettes to make us more addicted, the food industry is upping the amount of fat, sugar, and salt. As you start to change your life and change your body, I think of it as peeling back layers of an onion. And each layer, you're, you're starting to learn and identify within your body. And I didn't realize that I am extraordinarily salt sensitive. I can't have salt at all in any way, shape, or form in even processed foods. I don't cook with it, number one, but I don't use things that have salt in it if at all possible to avoid it. A lot of times I'll make my own veggie broth just so I don't have even that little bit of salt in there. And I get blood pressure headaches. It's, I'm one of the rare ones because you usually, your, when your blood pressure goes up, you don't feel it. I do, I get blood pressure headaches. And I went to a restaurant and got a cup of soup one cup, eight ounces. And I had that and a salad. And I didn't get out to the, to the car. I thought my head was gonna split open. And it was so bad. And I Googled it. That was 50, 56% of my daily nutritional requirement for salt in that eight ounces. And I'm like, oh my God, I wouldn't eat that in a month. And I ate it in one cup. And my head, I thought, was gonna explode open. So basically, we're talking about excluding refined sugars and oils. But, but, but my, my, my extra virgin, cold-pressed olive oil, what about that? Hard healthy, right? <coughs> no. I don't care if it was pressed by virgins <laughs> on the seventh solstice of the seventh month. No, no oil. Basically, it's gonna sludge your blood, okay? And I saw this, my son was a wrestler, and if you've ever had anybody wrestle, you know how aerobic that sport is. And he transitioned from ninth grade to 10th grade. We went plant-based at that point. I would never give him money. He had to eat out of my cooler. It was all plant-based. And I never saw him. One of the things I would see his competitors doing was this. Because as soon as they are, they are cardiac and they couldn't breathe, their, their chests are just like he. <sighs> And they can't breathe. And they, what they do is they involuntarily put their arms over their heads to try and stretch their lungs so they can get more oxygen and give a chance to their body to recover. My son never did that. I, in all the years from when he went plant-based from that point on, I never saw him. Oh, my God. He was, he was incredible. He really was. Okay. So what about supplements? Well, my son, going back to him, he played the baritone in middle school. It was painful. Oh, my God. It was just... Um pa pa, um pa pa. I mean, he had the theme from Jaws down, you know, dunna, dunna. I mean, that was it. That was all he could play. But when he got into the symphony, I was like, that's my kid? That doesn't sound like what's in the basement. It's once you start to take the baritone out and have to listen to it on the side, and it's like, oh my God. And that's what's happening, is because these foods work like a symphony in our body. So if you like take things out, of it, it's not gonna work the same way that it is. Like if you have vitamin C and you're eating an orange, you're getting the fiber, you're getting the phytonutrients, you're getting all of these things that are in that orange and they're working together synergistically. So if you take it out as a supplement, it's not gonna work the same way. And a lot of times the fiber is not there. Now I'm a chemistry teacher, so I'll take cereal and I'll grind it up in a mortar and pestle and I'll put it in with a magnetic stirrer and literally, I'll take the magnet out, and there's the iron, <laughs> iron fortified, literally. Like you just took your 57 Chevy and ground it up into iron filings and put it into the Cheerios. The only thing we can't get from this is B12. So I take once a week, I have a sublingual spray, but that's it, we don't need anything else. And we've kind of been brainwashed. Oh my God, we gotta have a multivitamin. No, you don't, I just saved you a lot of money. Forget the supplements, you don't need them, it's the food. Your body is gonna change, and change very quickly, and within 10 days. And I've been doing a lot of, you know, get your cell phones out right now, get your cell phones out. Go on Facebook, go to Plant-Based Cape Cod, okay? Connect with me, all right? 
and I've done a lot of 10-day challenges, and we've actually started plant-based your town, and we've got plant-based Providence, and I think there's a couple of people from plant-based Providence that are here that have come to join, and you know, you're going to start to see changes within your body very quickly, and you have to work with your doctor. So we did a lot of these 10-day challenges, and within 10 days, you're going to start to see changes happening. And especially if you're on high blood pressure medications or you're diabetic, your, your medications are going to change and change so quickly, okay, within 10 days, literally. So you have to be prepared, and you're going to have to teach your doctor because most of the doctors, unless you come here, <laughs> you know, these doctors are clearly educated. But I had to educate mine, you know. And I would walk in and would hand her and say, okay, this is what I want you to read. I want, you know, and I had to educate her. I've got her broken in, you know, so we're good. But you're going to have to work with your doctor, especially if, you know, as your body starts to change. And I suggest you get a good blood work base. And whatever you can, the best blood work that you can afford. Some people, you know, their insurance will cover. But I just did a whole huge panel of blood work on myself that was absolutely amazing. And it just really was an eye-opener. But I had to pay for it out of my own pocket. And it was several hundred dollars. So whatever you can afford, get the best blood work. And work with your doctor. And you're going to see changes happening so quickly. It's incredible. And you're going to need some support going through this. Because like any journey... You, it's, it's, <laughs> you're going to have these hidden hills and valleys and dips and potholes in the road. And, you know, you're going to go off the path <laughs> and, and deviate. And you're, gonna, you're not going to feel well. And there's changes. And once you start, your body starts to go through these changes, you're going to release a lot of toxins that's going to be built up in that fat that you've been carrying around for a while. Uh, yeah, those become really great fat storehouses of toxin chemicals that you've been building up. And I, I'm really adamant about these toxins. You have to embrace this and know that this change is coming because you're going to feel crappy. You're going to feel like, oh, I feel like I'm coming down with a cold or a flu or, or pimples or rashes, things like that that can happen. So find help. There's the National Health Association. They have been promoting a plant-based diet since the 1950s which is absolutely amazing. They're an amazing association. Plant Peer Nation, and if you're not familiar with Plant Peer Nation, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, his son Nelson, created a video called Plant Peer Nation. And at the end of that movie, he created a call to action that we have to change. We, we can't do this from the top down. We have to do it from a grassroots movement. And he challenged people to become pod leaders and create groups in their own areas. And I am, right now I live in New York, but I'm going to be moving to Cape Cod. I've already started plant-based Westchester, and I'm going to start plant-based Cape Cod. There's already a website, plantbasedcapecod.net. Check that out. This is from Plant Pure Nation. They have food that's already whole food plant-based that's frozen, that comes to your door. Because I hear people, I don't have time to cook. Okay, order these. These are amazing. Husband approved. <laughs> My husband's going, yep. Because there's times when I don't have time to cook or we go on the road. And I'll use these. These little things fit perfectly in. It's called the Mini Hot Logic. And I forgot to bring that. But the Mini Hot Logic, you can sit it and I, we plug it into the car. You know, they've got a converter that you can plug into the cigarette lighter. And then as we travel, then we don't have to stop and eat. Because I can't eat out. I just can't anymore. I mean, we'll find a couple places that will cater to me, and, and I know that they're not doing it, but we'll go out to places and they say, yeah, no salt, and they put salt in it, and I can feel it. My blood pressure will go up very quickly. So if you've not seen these, these are amazing. The foods are incredible. So these come frozen to your door. You can order them in 5, 10, 20 packs and, and go from there. I've also started a, a program to help for support because it's hard when you're doing this and to know what changes. Food addiction is real. It is so real. And it's hard for some people to give up some of the foods. And so what most people think, oh, I can't give up my cheese, okay? And there's a great book called by Dr. Neil Barnard called The Cheese Trap. And actually, if you don't want to read it or don't have time, if you go on my website, Simply Plant Based, I've broken his book down with Dr. Bernard and got to spend time asking him questions. And so I took them through the whole, we broke it down into five sections of the video. So that's the Reader's Digest condensed version. But I strongly recommend you read the book because, oh my God, if you can eat cheese after that, God bless you. Because when you realize how bad cheese is, <laughs> wow, it is, it's so bad. Anyway, so I started a program called Simply Plant-Based Beginnings that's going to start at the beginning of each month that walks you through the foundation 
of a plant-based education. So I teach you, there's recipes, I cook, I show you how to do this. We connect on Sunday nights for a coaching call to help you guide you through. And then after you graduate, then you can go on to continuing education, and that picks right up where plant-based beginnings leaves off. So, so how do I begin? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> you gotta go clean out the house. You've got to go to the refrigerator. You've got to take it all, all that crap out and throw it away. Don't give it to your friends. No. Throw it away. Okay? And make your home, your kitchen, your wellness center. Seriously. Okay? You have to do that. Because it's so important in terms of you taking charge of your health destiny without question. So what do I do after I've cleaned it out? Well, you've got to restock. And so I put a list into the handouts that you have, okay? There's a list there that shows you what you should stock your house with. Please fill it. And don't feel you have to get it all at once, okay? It's, it's a progression. But I gave you a list of things that you want to work towards, okay? And so in my fridge at any given time, you'll find I have, and I do a lot of batch cooking on the weekend with my Instant Pot. <laughs> Just saying. And if you're going to buy Instant Pots, buy them at the same time because they change a little bit over time. And so, like, the first Instant Pot and the second one I bought were different. So that I brought that one up to my house up on Cape Cod, left that one there, and I have my other two back at my house in Westchester. I will have these bad boys going all weekend long. And I'll be cooking and creating all kinds of things. Like, for example, I have some kind of bean in my fridge at all times, some kind of grain. My absolute favorite, favorite grain is kamut, K-A-M-U-T. Delicious. It's like a, a chewy, barley, nutty flavor awesomeness. And I use that as a base for a lot of different things. So I'll have a beans, grains, cooked potatoes. Potatoes then become what's called resistant starch once you cook them and put them in the refrigerator. And it's harder to digest, so it's less calories that you're eating. And it's amazing. So uh, some kind of salsa or um, dressing, and I'll keep potatoes, some kind of root vegetables I'll keep cooked at all times. So I can pull that stuff out and make a dinner in 10 minutes easily. From all of these things I've already pre-cooked, I'm just basically heating up. And then you sprinkle things like this on top. <laughs> Deliciousness. Sesame ginger. Saying. Okay. So what do I put? So that's in my fridge. In the freezer, I'm going to have things like, oh, my God, love Trader Joe's. They're shredded hash browns. Oh, so good. You can make some amazing things. I make potato waffles that are to die for. And my videos, There's if you go on Simply Plant Based, there is a link on there that says recipes. These are all cooking videos that I made for you guys. And then if you go to the YouTube channel that the video is on, the recipe's right there. You can copy and paste it. Knock your socks off, okay? So shredded hash browns make amazing potato waffles. Oh, so good. Crispy, crunchy, ah, and you bite that crunch. I love that crunch. I mean, that is awesome. A couple other things I'll find in my freezer. You're gonna see ginger. Okay, that's in the bottom middle, and then some turmeric. Both of those are amazing flavors that are, especially the turmeric, they're anti-inflammatory, amazing. Truly, truly amazing. And then I'll keep things like citrus. I'll put lemons and limes in the freezer, and then I'll grate those bad boys and use things like this. Forget those zesters, too fine. Uh-uh, I go for coarse and chunk, you know, this one's good and then chunkier. Mm-mm-mm. And I'll make things that are just incredible in terms of flavor. That lemon, I'll do the whole thing. I'll use that whole lemon and zest that. It had such amazing flavor. It's just so incredible. I keep these things in my freezer, especially berries. Berries, you definitely want to make sure. Those are the, I left, gave you a list of from the EWG, the Clean 15, and the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen are things you definitely want to make sure you're buying organic. Berries are one of them. That's my new crack. I love berries, okay? So I'm addicted to them. And I'll make a berry bowl. So I'll take a little bit of oats, put oats in the bottom, and then I'll put my berries, and I put raspberries, which when they're, ap after they unfreeze, they turn into mush, okay? And then I'll put some blueberries and blackberries on top, and then they unfreeze, and that they're, 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 their liquid just comes out and permeates the oats. Then I'll take some lemon and zest, the lemon peels on that. The lemon peels is amazing for reducing in cancer. So I'll add that and I'll add some lemon juice and a little bit of water to the oats. And I'll add a bunch of other things to it, some like hemp seeds, chia seeds, things like that. So that's in the freezer. 
In my pantry, I've got Bima and Paws. I love these. That's in the upper left-hand corner. I don't, I'm not a big fan of you know, the canned beans, but I'll keep them around if I need to do a cooking demonstration and take it, or you know, if I need a certain kind of bean and I wasn't cooking that this week. You know, it's good to have that there. I love Trader Joe's. They have a fire-roasted tomato salsa, which is just incredible, and it's no salt. So it's hard to find things without salt because salt is in everything. It really is. My husband and I went out to a restaurant, and thank goodness the line was long because it was one of those restaurants where you can go in and they, oh, I want the beans, I want the rice, I want the salsa. You know, it was a Mexican restaurant. And I'm sitting there, I went on and got my phone out because I was bored and waiting in line. And I Googled what I was going to have, and I looked at the amount of salt, and I went, oh, I can't eat here. This will kill me. <laughs> It will kill me. My blood pressure would have been so high just from that one meal. And I said, we can't eat here. And we had to leave. And bless my husband, he puts up with me. <laughs> so, but he also has reverse multiple sclerosis. So just want to point that out. That's huge. Huge. So I use applesauce in place of oil and baking. Use that. Date sugar, if I have to use it in baking, you can't use that like in a, like a cup of tea or something because it just doesn't work <laughs> as like sugar doesn't dissolve. But it does bake well if you have to use that in sugar for baking. And it's not that process. So it's just basically ground up dates that are kind of fine, with, you know, tiny small pieces. And then garlic and potatoes, oats. Those are just some of the basic things. Spices are going to be your new best friend. Be bold. My husband definitely is considering intervention at this point because I've become a hoarder of spices. And I love trying out new spices all the time. My favorite, absolute favorite, <laughs> is Bear Bear. And it's an Ethiopian mixture. You can get it at Whole Foods. But there's a recipe for it in Kim Campbell's cookbook, Plant Pure Nation cookbook. And she's got a recipe that makes Bear Bear and has salt-free for her recipe. So that is an amazing, amazing addition. So what about gizmos and gadgets? What do I got to get? Okay, well, you got to invest in some pans. On here, I love Swiss Diamond. They're a little bit expensive, but I've been buying a piece at a time. And honestly, I will be giving those pans to my great-grandchildren because they're amazing in terms of how tough they are and durable, and nothing sticks to them. You don't need oil at all in any way, shape, or form. Now, ceramic pans, you can go to like Walmart and buy a ceramic pan, and those are pretty good. But here's the problem, <laughs> being the science teacher that I am. You've got two different expansion rates. You've got a lining of ceramic, and it expands and contracts at different rates than the aluminum underneath. And so what happens is over time, the ceramic is going to start flaking off, and you're going to be exposed to aluminum. And aluminum is not something you want in your diet. We had the banana oat balls, and I just want to show this to you because let me show you a little shot. Let's see if we can get this picture right here. Okay. So in this, if you can, oh, there we go. Don't want to drop any. They're too good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but these are absolutely amazing, and they're nice and crispy and crunchy, and they're moist and hot and deliciousness, and especially if you take them out and they've got the little chocolate chips in there. Oh, yeah, we're taking it to Jedi level then, but this is still really, really good, okay? Deliciousness, so I just wanted to show you what that came out of the air fryer. Amazing. So that was born out of sheer desperation, <laughs> So, in terms of food, we've got our risotto going, and I think that's almost ready to add the peas shortly. And we've got the Instant Pot that's still over here. It's cooking. I don't know how many minutes does it have left? 26? Okay. So, what's happening is it went to pressure, and now it's at full pressure. So, this is acting now as a pressure cooker. And so, once it goes back to, and it will make a little happy sound when it's done, and then it has to release its pressure and go back down, okay? So, you know, the 30 minutes is really probably about an hour of cooking time because it takes time to bring it up to pressure. And if you have it warmer, it'll go up to pressure very much quicker than when it has to start from being cold. So Swiss diamonds are amazing pans, and they're just incredible to use. I, the ceramic works, you know, and, and if that's all your budget can afford, that's great. But over time, you're going to have to replace those pans. So... This, if you can just start to buy them, these are amazing pans. I love this. And this is just something really, really simple. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. I get it on Amazon, too. It cuts the onions and things like that. I use this pretty much on a daily basis. When you're trying to cut up things, they are usually big and bulky and hard to store. 
This is flat and it fits in my drawer. <laughs> Makes it super easy. These are silicone mats and these, you take those, roll those out and put them on a cookie sheet, you need no oil. Nothing will stick to these bad boys. So I use them for everything, for baking, like I'll put the garlic on it and it just sits there and it's wonderful. You make cookies, you don't need oil. You don't have to use the, you know, I used to use vegetable shortening, right, and, and grease your pans. Nope, no more. The air fryer, I can't say enough about the air fryer. <laughs> I love this. My French fries, I'm addicted to them. So I usually make them at least three or four times a week. I just love them. And uh, you, they're crunchy and they taste just like regular French fries. So I don't feel deprived when they find out I'm plant-based. So it's like, so so what are you eating? Like grass clippings, bark? What, what are we talking here? I'm like, no, that's just for special occasions. <laughs> um, no, it, the food, the variety of the food is just amazing. And I think what it is, is you're just trying to figure out what is it that you really love? What dish, you know, that you really love? Like, I love french fries. So the, the big issues with the french fries were the oil and the salt. So I found a way that I can still have my french fries and not have the oil and the salt. So it's just learning strategies and ways that you can transition into this lifestyle. The air fryer has been a wonderful choice, and especially if you're in a small place, and especially in the summertime when you don't want to turn the oven on, you know, this doesn't heat up the house that much. So I don't know if you guys could smell the banana oat balls as they were cooking. Yeah, it, that's what your house smells like. It's, it's awesome. It's really awesome. So this is the Instant Pot, and I can't say enough about the Instant Pot. It's amazing in terms of the variety of things that you can cook. They have a smaller one. Eric Adams, who is the Brooklyn Borough President, he, his story is fabulous. And if you go on my website under videos, I've done a lot of interviews with people, and he's one of them. And he was basically, he had such bad diabetes. He was blind in one eye, and he was going blind in the other eye. And he had such bad neuropathy that his feet, he, could, he was having a hard time walking. And then he had such bad intestinal issues as well. He had burnt like his esophagus, I mean, from the acid reflux that he was continually dealing with. And he went plant-based, and not only is his sight completely restored, the neuropathy's gone, okay? He, his story is just absolutely incredible. I mean, if you touch him, <laughs> you go up and touch him and, and say, hey, you guys are going, you know? It's like touching a brick wall. I mean, he is like, he's super power, this man. And he's actually running for New York mayor. And I hope he wins, because he's been doing a lot of amazing things in the school systems. He's been getting plant-based foods and choices available. And he's been working to create, you know, public health programs to promote plant-based in terms of medical programs. So he's just done super amounts. But then his mother, who had been diabetic for over 30 years, okay, on insulin and medications for over 30 years, she went plant-based after seeing her son go through this miraculous change and within four months was off all of her medications that she had been on for 30 years. It's just amazing how when we actually put the right fuel into the body, how quickly the body can heal. So Instant Pot, game changer in terms of cooking and having food prepared. And I carry my food with me at all times. I have a cooler with me. I take it, w and, and if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I show what's in my cooler today. And you can see what I'm eating. And some people say, oh my God, do you eat all of that? Sometimes, sometimes more, sometimes less depends upon my day and my body and how it's responding and you're like oh my god but that's a lot of food yeah it is I eat a lot but I still have lost over 100 pounds I mean because once you learn the concept it's called caloric density once you learn that concept and how you can dial down it's amazing how your body responds and you're putting the right nutrients into your body so I have I, pr I spend several hours in the kitchen prepping for the week to make my week successful because failure to plan is a plan for failure, okay? If you're not preparing your food ahead of time, you're setting yourself up for failure. And I'll let me tell you this <laughs> little story. Um, I was tutoring, they called me up and said, could you come over, he's got a chemistry test, and it was a May day, and I ended up spending several hours because he really needed help. And I, by the time I got out of there, I was hungry. I was just starving. So I was driving by and I went, oh, there's a bagel place. Uh, that's great, I'm just gonna get a toasted wheat bagel, that's it. 
and I pulled in and I got and I ordered my toasted bagel. And he's like, "We have a new cream cheese, and it's got um, honey and almonds and walnuts and raisins and cinnamon. Do you want some?" And I'm like, "Yes!" I didn't even think. I mean, it was just a knee jerk reaction. And he slathered it on there. It was a half an inch thick, and I ate it like I was. And I got into the car, and I didn't even get ho- ten minutes down the road. I didn't even get home, and I felt like somebody had had put a samurai sword through my stomach. And I'm like going, oh my God, oh my God. And I got home and I'm like laying on the bed mooing. And my husband's like, what's wrong with you? I cream cheese, oh my God. And have I eaten cream cheese again? No. And they call it McDougal's Revenge because once you start cleaning out your system and you eat off the plan, it's gonna make you feel sick. And so that really cured me from cream cheese. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Instant Pot, game changer, OK? Oh, we had a little ding. So that means we had 10 more minutes on this, OK? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this on top, OK? And I'm just taking my bag of, this is my green peas, just from you know Whole Foods. And I'm just going to add some of this. And all we want to do is just heat up the peas, just so that they're not, you know, frozen super cold so I'm just putting them into a bowl and they're just going to heat up with some of the heat from the from the rice and we'll put that on for another 10 minutes or so and what I used to make my risotto now we got this rice going we got the peas okay and I love it Trader Joe's they have a raw peas Okay, if you've ever seen these, they're amazing. They're English peas, and they just come in a bag, and they're already pre-shelled and everything, they're, and they're so amazing. And I love eating those as my snack. But I also will cook and put them into the spring pea risotto. It takes it to the next level, okay? Uh, this is so good to eat, and when I make this dish and I take it to what I call the carnivores, that would be my family, okay? Because I'm the only one who's changed in my family, and changed my health destiny. And my whole family on both sides are morbidly obese. And I'm not talking, when I say morbidly, I'm like, we're talking Jedi level, morbid. They are dealing with all kinds of health issues. Anyway, so we've got this going back and we're adding this a um, little bit more heat. But to make the cream, to make the amazingness, I used, this is called silken tofu. And I y- usually will buy this, they have it in shelf stable packages and what I'll do is I'll get this from uh, Amazon, I'll just buy a box of it. And they have shelf-stable packages. I'm not a big fan of tofu, but I don't use it a lot. But when I take this, I'll make this to the, I'll take this to the carnivores. I have to like, make sure I get some, because they'll wipe it out. Okay, we're big foodies in our family, and they're like, this taste is really good. I don't tell them it's plant-based, and you know, but um, I use silken tofu as the base. And then I use this, this is creamy dill dip. And what I do is I use this as the flavor packet, and I'll mix that with this, with a little bit of almond milk. And that is now in this. And, and I'll put it in a blender and just mix it up to make it into a sauce. Now you could use this for a variety of things. You can use it for potatoes and drizzle it over that. Oh my God, so good. You could use it as like a mayonnaise, you know, and thicken it so that it's not as thick. You know, um, so I wouldn't put like the almond milk if you wanted to make it as a mayonnaise. So you can use it in a variety of what you can dips, you know, things like that. So this just makes a wonderful. So what we're going to do once this gets heated up a little bit is we're going to mix this with the rice and the peas. Oh my God, Jedi level. Okay, so that is going to be some really good foods. All right, so back to our presentation. All right, you need to have a blender of some kind. Now, I recommend, I love the Vitamix because literally you can take shoe leather and break it down to the cellular level, okay? And it's such a high powered blender. It's got, it's like 11 amps, okay? It's got power. I mean, it can take anything down to make things creamy because I love, like when I make soups and stuff like that, I like creamy soups. This will make it uh, amazing. So you gotta have a blender, but get whatever you can afford. There's some good ones out there that is not as expensive as the Vitamix, but you can do a lot with the Vitamix. I also have, over my stove, I have a pot rack. So it makes it just easier to access my pans, and it makes it just easier to have. You don't have to have all of these things right away. I mean, I use other things, like I use glass Pyrex dishes for cooking. I use parchment paper a lot.
I still use aluminum foil, but I don't let the aluminum foil touch my food. I put parchment paper down first, and then I'll use the aluminum, like I'm making a lasagna or something like that. But uh, those are some nice things. Please do, if you're on Facebook, connect with me. I have plant created plant-based Cape Cod on Facebook, and I've got my website, Simply Plant-Based. But I also wanted to share this with you. Starting September 2019, there's going to be a plant-based educational retreat in Falmouth. Okay, so I'm super excited about that. And it's going to be hands-on learning cooking and all kinds of experiences because you have to go through what I call changes. You have to change what goes in, so that's food and drink. You have to change what goes on, so that's the environmental toxins. Literally in 26 seconds, anything you're putting on your skin is in your bloodstream. And there's a lot of chemicals that are out there. I could spend hours talking about that. But you have to change what goes in, you have to change what goes on, and then you got to exercise. You can't get around it. So we got to move. Got to move it, move it. I hope you've learned a few things tonight. So.